Hi, welcome back to Phlebotomy Solutions. Today we're gonna be looking at the next question that I get most common in the classroom or from you, the viewers out there in phlebotomy world. So today we're gonna be looking at the uh, question regarding how to transport blood specimens from an isolation room. Uh, that is a question uh, I do get if there's any special precautions we need to take or what are some of the uh, standards we need to, you know, and the practices we need to follow. Well, first I'd like to say, check with your hospital, check with your lab, uh, see if there's any special uh, transportation requirements they require of you uh, in taking blood from an isolation room back to the lab. So we need to look at that first and foremost, but let's look at the question and let's see what the experts, experts have to say on this. It says, what is the proper way to transport filled tubes of blood out of an isolation room after re removing contaminated personal protective equipment? So this is after you, you removed your PPE, how do we continue from there to transport uh, the blood? Here's, <clears throat> here's what the experts have to say. The consensus among the infection control community we consulted is that employee standard precautions should protect everyone regardless of the circumstances. However, samples removed from an isolation room are recommended to be placed inside a separate bag for transport. Some mistakenly encase the tube in their gloves as they are removed and transport them that way. They don't realize, however, that they are transporting a known pathogen back to the laboratory along with the tubes. Contaminated gloves and other PPE should stay in the room. We recommend a clean isolation bag for samples labeled with the biohazard icon. <clears throat> so it's not recommended to take a tube and put it in your glove after you've drawn the patient or really in any glove in that sense, even if you pull it out of a, a, a box. These are not sterile gloves, they are open. And if you're in an infection room and you have your gloves in there, then that is a higher risk of contamination even in the gloves. Whenever you, tend, whenever you go into an isolation room, your equipment should be, your, ma your main equipment should be outside the room and only take what you need in the room. And maybe a little extra in case you need extra tubes, but you should not be taking your whole cart in the room uh, in an isolation room. You're exposing everything to possible infection and then carrying that pathogen back to the lab, including everything in your cart. So once your cart is outside the room and you've taken what you needed and you're done, you know, you might have, uh, make sure you uh, bring a, a biohazard bag or, or something with you that you, when you come back out, you can drop everything in there and then carry that back to the lab. You don't want to bring out your PPE. So uh, putting your blood specimen in a biohazard isolation bag is recommended. And again, check with your hospital. They might have other procedures or, or even more of a precaution you need to take along the way. But putting them in a biohazard bag with the icon and transporting back to the lab is a lower risk of bringing back a pathogen than doing it with something that might be contaminated like your glove. And again, there is never 100% a guarantee that you're not gonna bring anything back to the lab. But again, this lowers the percentage and chance of you doing so than bringing a contaminated glove or something back in the, from an isolation for your PPE back to the lab, which has a higher chance of being contaminated with the pathogen. So again, make sure you follow your hospitals and laboratories policies and procedures regarding transporting uh, tubes back to the lab from an isolation room. And if this helps, uh, hopefully you can maybe follow this procedure if you, if you weren't doing it before, putting your blood in an isolation or a biohazard bag and then transporting it that way, make it a little bit safer. So I hope this question, it gets answered. I hope it helps you, the viewers. Um, if you do have any questions you'd like us to answer, please leave a comment here, or you can email me with your question. I'll be glad to get to it. But we're gonna be looking at future episodes of answering the most common questions asked in the area of phlebotomy, specifically uh, in the classroom setting or in the professional working uh, areas out there. So again, I wanna thank you for tuning into my channel. Please like, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more of this in the future. And again, my name is Al Garza with Phlebotomy Solutions, and I wanna say thank you and have a great day.